what is good we got week four going into week five we got moves to make of course because what would a week be without some moves to make here we got big co back in the fold great to see you uh, but this week we dealt with a, a big injury and we're not 100% sure how long it's going to be, but we know every indication is that it's going to be lengthy, if not for the year for Rashi Rice. So I felt like that was probably a good place to start. You know, if you had Rashi Rice and you had a decent team, he was taking you over the top because Rashi Rice has been exceptional to start the season, right? First move to make is do not sell Rashi injured Rashi Rice for cheap to somebody else keep your team going love it move number one <laughs> move number one is don't sell them cheap that's don't what we're here to do that's literally what we're here to do we're trying to help you not have a bad team i i mean there's i guess plenty of stuff wrong but i'm pretty good at helping you not have a bad team and selling rasheed rice cheap is the fast track to right, having a bad team don't don't sell them to for somebody else because you need to keep something going figure something else out to, to go move uh and get uh, another player for you. So we got some options here. If Rasheed Rice misses whole season or a big chunk of it, which it, all indications are, I think DK Metcalf and George Pickens are two of some younger guys that you could go after. And you're not going to get one for one replacement here, but those were guys that kind of popped up to me because they're not uh, unobtainable pieces that are really, really expensive at this point. And, and maybe DK will start encroaching on that territory, but even through through these two good games or the through through the good season he's had, and week one was not great, but the last two have been good, and he's on his way to having another good game as we speak. And it just seemed like the value is is still kind of depressed a little bit on DK Metcalf. So I tried to sell DK Metcalf just for a first before the season, you know, in the middle of the draft, you know, of, of uh, high end, uh, mid middle end to high end first, but couldn't even get a response from him. And obviously yeah. that was before the season started, but he's just kind of the player that everybody's just eh on. Nobody's like a killer got to get him. And I, I just feel like DK is playing really well. The system setting up well for him. They seem to be getting explosives with him. What's your thoughts on acquiring DK Metcalf uh, for, for Rashi Rice here, Big Co.? Yeah, like you said, as a as a replacement and not selling Rasheed Rice in the deal is right. the is the format here. You got a Monday night football game on right now, and DK Metcalf is looking big and strong and fast, and he's still healthy, and he's healthy. You know, right? So he's he's more expensive tonight that you know to on uh, Tuesday morning than he would have been on Monday morning, I believe, because it's just you know you get him in that game where everybody's watching against the Lions. It's a it's a big. Big matchup tonight. We got our all black jerseys on. I got my new black t shirt to match. I'm a big fan of picking up DK Metcalf right now. Like you said, I think I think he's come around. I think last year, last offseason was like a really low spot for him. And Gino kind of had a bad seat of quote unquote bad season last year based off the season before where he had really peaked. His value was was depressed. We were we were tired of him. You know, we had we had DK Metcalf fatigue. He wasn't really crushing it for us. But then the, tonight, before the game started, the two players that was in a in a the conversation with DK Metcalf is in the first five years of their career, starting off with nine hundred and something yards and five plus touchdowns. You want to guess? Justin Jefferson. Uh, no, he ain't even been in the league that long. I don't think this year maybe would have been his fifth year. Yeah, I think so. It was AJ Green and somebody else ridiculous. I'm sorry, it's only two games. I I I forgot fifty percent of the names. So it was AJ Green and somebody else ridiculous. 900 yards and five touchdowns plus in every season in the first five seasons. And DK Metcalf was was the number three, on the, the third person to join that group. And obviously you pick a number, you know, somebody else might have had a thousand yards and only four touchdowns, blah, blah, blah. But like that's Mr. Consistency there. We just got tired of him. So I think he's a little bit more expensive now than he was a few yeah. months ago. That, sure. that new offense, that new Seattle offense. But one thing, you know, this is week four. It's, it's, it's September. Tomorrow, before anybody hears this, it'll be October. But before maybe it really sinks in, that new offense in, in Seattle is kind of working the kinks out. Everybody's getting, but I mean, Gino said in the offseason, he was like, this is some plays I've never even seen before. This is ridiculous. This is really spreading it all over the field. Maybe you can definitely still buy DK Metcalf right now for cheaper than you can be able to buy him in, say, week 10. Right. So, you know, he really clicks. 
like I said, he's having another good week. So by the time you hear this, it, it might be a little out of reach to reasonably price him. Right now, you're. I've just pulled up Dynasty Daddy, DK Metcalf for Rashi Rice, DK Metcalf for Rashi Rice. The first two trains on the page. Yeah, well, that's um, the op. Yeah, so that's the trade. Right. Yeah, they did that. They did that one for one. You see a first and a third here for DK, a first and a second, and a, getting a third back in DK. DK for T, TJ Hawkinson, and that's in a one point tight end premium. So you know, maybe I don't love that. But the price has gone up a little bit. Jalen Waddle and a two for DK Metcalf, ETN for Metcalf. So price seems to be rising a little bit. Here's a first just straight up for DK Metcalf. Here's two firsts for DK Metcalf. Sam Laporta, no tight end premium, DK Metcalf. You know, that was a, a day or two ago. And obviously he's playing, you know, right now as we're as we're speaking and having a decent game. So that's maybe a little bit of a higher end. But I, the reason I brought him up because it didn't seem like he was untradeable for of, of kind of maybe some of the upper end elite guys. Let's take a look at, at George Pickens. I, I'm trying to think of a good example of somebody else I could trade, you know, to get DK well, you know, it, Pick and DK Metcalf to get, you know, without giving away your first, second and third to get DK Metcalf, which if I had a good team, a first and a third, no problem giving up for DK well, Metcalf. That trade, that trade is right here. Obviously this, you know, there's no context behind these and uh, this stuff, but it's like, uh, First and a third for DK right here on Dynasty Daddy. But you picked out a DK Metcalf. You know, he's sitting here in tier four of the wide receivers that we just did for the ranking show. He's sitting right here beside like Brian Thomas. Like you're the same first and a third, the random first and a third pick that you're trading away to try to get DK Metcalf. Nobody's giving you Brian Thomas. Whoever's got Brian Thomas just spent a first round pick on it, you know, right. and he's playing well as a youngster. He's not playing as well as DK Metcalf is, but he's playing well as a youngster. I mean, points, fantasy points, maybe he is, but, you know, Devonta Smith, probably decent value above DK. It cost you more to get him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think a DK Metcalf is a good pick for somebody whose production probably outweighs really the dynasty value cost that it takes to go pick him up right now, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, let's move to George Pickens a little bit. Let's, you know, and to me, this this mark is even more depressed because we talked about it. You're going to have to live with some some low games here, but I think there's just a, a pretty okay floor built in here with any week you could have what you said on the last show, five for 120, right? Any, yeah. any singular week. And as you continue to move forward with Fields and him as the starter, if that's the way they continue to go down the road, it should continue to build and get better and better and better, right? You know, George Pickens for Aaron Jones, is it is a trade here? George Pickens for a first. George Pickens for Jerome Ford. Um, George Pickens George, for Aaron Jones is wild. I mean, George Adonis Pickens Yonder. for J.K. Dobbins. George Kip Pickens crazy. for Khalil Shakir in a second. That's crazy. Um, and these are when one day crazy. ago trades, so that wasn't after yesterday's game, but still. Yeah, um, I mean, all those trades are all those trades are easily Pickens. George Pickens, Keon Coleman, or or Jay, and Jalen Wright. You know, yeah, Jalen Wright was a was a big big deal a couple of weeks. Or ago. sorry, Jalen Warren. My bad. That was today. I, yeah, yeah. I still got. I got to take Pickens. Yeah, me too. That's kind of why I said it. You know, you got Kelsey and a third for Pickens. No premium. Pickens. Um, I'm not really sure what happened here, but it was a first for George Pickens and a first. Some presumably a good team and a bad team. Maybe swapping first. Yeah. There's George Pickens and a third for Rashi Rice. Don't do that. George Pickens, Lad, Rico Dowdle for Rashi Rice in the two. Don't do that. Just keep Rashi Rice, Bo. Just <laughs> yeah, uh, go get Pickens another way. So that's you know. So here's some some options. You know, obviously you have some. You know, here's George Pickens and Kyron Williams for a first, a first, and a second. That seems awfully cheap for for those guys. Oh, for but, sure. So like, so, all right. So Pickens for Dobbins was straight up. Jerome Ford for Pickens was straight up. Right. Aaron Jones for Pickens was straight up. So look, basically, what. Those are teams that need running backs. Those mm -hmm. are teams that need running backs and they're trading away pickings. And in Dynasty, they're going to pay for that. They're going to pay the price for that. Those are bad trades. So yeah. like right now, if, if you got a running back who's doing decent, obviously it's hard to get rid of a running back. I understand. But when you can get a young stud wide receiver for a J.K. Dobbins, which I, there's nobody I want to see more succeed than J.K. Dobbins based on his injury history. But let's be honest. It's J.K. Dobbins, right? And then Jerome Ford, give me a break, dude. And then Aaron Jones, come on, man. He he's absolutely slaying it in running back touch rate and care, you know, mm -hmm. opportunity rate per, you know, he's all, in the last two weeks, he's even gotten even farther away from distancing himself from Ty Chandler. Like the Vikings are riding this guy. And that's great. 
but he's an older running back and you give me a young stud wide receiver in dynasty. Come on, man. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. Those were some of the higher end assets. I want to move to some some older guys. You know, I don't I don't know how much terribly cheaper these guys are going to be than say George Pickens maybe was just because they're scoring a lot of points right now. But they're older assets. They're 27, 28, 29 years old. And I got Godwin and Deontay Johnson here as potential buys of somebody. You know, those guys could be going on a on a sideways team is more kind of what I'm looking at there, right? On a on a team yeah. that didn't start very well and they're just older. They're easier to pry away from somebody than potentially George Pickens for some people and definitely DK Metcalf, obviously. And Godwin is playing out of his mind. He's 28 years old. If you have any inkling of, hey, my team is is heading down the wrong path, we're not scoring points, you know, might be obtainable. Here's one with Godwin for two twos. If you pull up Dynasty Daddy and you start looking at these types of trades, there's going to be trades that you think is awful, and there's going to be trades that you think are great. You know, right. so that's that's the world we live in. Um, but like, there's a Najee Harris and a two for Chris Godwin. Give me Chris Godwin. You know, Chris Godwin for Javante Williams and a two. Give me Chris Godwin. You know, mm-hmm. there's a, a a one, two, and a three for Chris Godwin. I probably want the one, two, and a three, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, if, if if you got the best team in the league and that's the one twelve or the one eleven based on playoff luck, then I probably want Chris Godwin. Uh, yeah, but I mean, he's 28. So even still, I mean, a one, two, and a three is still hard to part with all three of those picks for Chris Godwin. He's 28, you know? Yeah, there's two um, twos for Godwin. There's Javon yeah. Baker, Blake Corum, and a second for Chris Godwin. Yeah. Give me Chris Godwin. You know what I mean? And if you're, but you're, if you're a rebuilding team, you're like, hey, I'll take the shot on Baker. I'll take the shot on Corum. I'll take the two, you know, whatever. Hey, exactly. I, uh, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good fair trade. If my guy just went down, then that, I would love to trade those guys away and I have a good team that's competing. Here you go. Chris Godwin, Tony Pollard, and a third for a first in Braylon Allen. Sure. You know, maybe a little heavy there, but, you know, just there's some yeah. flexibility. There's some oh, different values here with these guys that seem to be obtainable. And even if you're a good team, if you're a top four team scoring a ton of points and Rashi Rice was really elevating you, the first at the end of the I know nobody wants to part with it and you can look like an idiot and all the value mongers are come out and say how dumb you are and how stupid of a trade that is. But at the end of the day, we're trying to win ball games here, right? And Chris Godwin's on a tear right now and doesn't look like he's changing anytime. Baker's dealing. You know, it's not like Chris Godwin's going to be dead next year. So if you had a good team and you're trading away a first, like you said in the last video, we're four weeks in. So you don't want to do anything super crazy right this minute. I think the more I look at it and think about it, I don't think I can give away. I don't want to be giving away my first for Chris Godwin. I, obviously, he's crushing it right now, but coming into the season, like you were ecstatic. I'm okay with it. You were ecstatic to get a first for Chris Godwin. Sure, offer. sure, I, 100%, because you know? we didn't know what was going on. But now we're, we're Baker tied up, and how much longer does Godwin stay around? Or how much longer does Evans stay around? Maybe for a while, but, I mean, Godwin, we've been saying the same thing about Evans forever, and Godwin's like three, four years younger, so let's right. go. Um, if I'm a good yeah. team, I'm okay with it. I'm not, I'm not upset about it. So All right. Uh, now let's, look, let's go over to look at Deontay Johnson. Obviously, he's he's been on fire. Here's two twos for Deontay Johnson. And that that's the kind of stuff that that's the way that I'm trying to, who, who can I ship two twos off for and get an older guy like Deontay Johnson here? And that was today. And that's the kind of stuff that I'd be trying to pull off. Do I want to trade right. Jaden Reed for Deontay Johnson in the third? No. Uh, yeah, do I no, want to trade either. the first for Chris Godwin? No, of course not. I'd like to get at least the third back. Right. But yeah, I, I could see I, myself doing it. Well, you're on the right path. The, the way the, you know, I'd rather give you a two twos and a three. I'd rather give. I'd rather stack up the two twos and a three in the future than give away the first, which could you know just be that much yeah. more valuable. You know. Here you go. Here's a trade today. Deontay Johnson, who's a year younger than Chris Goblin, I believe. Here's a twenty-seven two, a twenty-six two, and a twenty-five three. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's a twenty-five two for Deontay Johnson. Deontay and a twenty-seven third for Bucky Irving and a twenty-five second. Deontay Johnson, Brevin Jordan, which whatever Brevin Jordan, but Ricky Pearsall or Deontay Johnson right now. Deontay Johnson is what I need, baby. You know? Yeah. Give Enrico Dowdle a two and a three for Deontay Johnson. Right. So, you know, this this seems like a great, a great target right here for you on the cheaper end of things. And Deontay just doing everything you wanted to see from Deontay Johnson at weeks one and two in three and four. Uh and and giving you very solid production here. So you gotta love that, right? 
Right. So that's that's kind of how we're dealing with Rashi Rice. There's some ideas, bunch of moves to make. I mean, by the time we're done with this, it's gonna be like 27 moves to make. Let's look at the counterpart of this and let's look at Worthy here for a second. Uh, good hype from a lot of people. If you got Worthy on your team and you're a Worthy guy, it was really hard to trade into that position to get him. You and I saw that, especially in these late rookie drafts. Really high value placed on him. And now you probably got another Thursday arrow. night. What's that, that? First Thursday, that first Thursday night, uh, yeah. he gets two touchdowns. I mean, that he was he was glowing red after that first Thursday night. The one thing I'll say before we start looking at Xavier Worthy trades, unless you're trying to find somebody that wants to give you that ridiculous payment for Worthy right now, I'd like to see a game or two mm-hmm. with Rasheed Rice hurt. You know, right. uh, I'd like to see a week or two before. Uh, before moving him off of what, like, you know, whatever your quote unquote value is on worthy today, unless that value to, to the buyer is higher in a substantial manner, I'd like to see what happens with the chiefs coming out next week, the week after when they get a couple weeks of practice to figure out how to use this rookie without Rasheed Rice, Hollywood Brown ain't coming back. You know, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, no, I, I, I mostly agree with you. But I just wanted to take a glance at it to see if you could potentially take advantage. And we don't know. Maybe maybe you will, in the end, be taken advantage of. But at least after uh, Rashi went out, Worthy scored a touchdown. Then he had the game ceiling first down catch on a little drag across the field, which I feel like you could do that every single play with Worthy. Here we go with some Dynasty Daddy trades. And really, for me, I would like to see him play as well. But like I said, can I extort extra value off of overreaction right now? And, yeah. you know. I like Xavier Worthy as much as the next guy. I love Xavier Worthy. But, you know, the first thing that popped into my head, and we just talked about the rankings, is, is could I trade Xavier Worthy for Jaden Reed right now after this? And if if, yeah. if that could happen, I, I'm fine with not seeing Xavier Worthy play another game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take I'll take Reed over Worthy. Yeah. I can't believe um, I'm he, saying that, but that's where we are today. Here's, uh, here's a couple of trades on Dynasty Daddy that happened today. So after the Rice trade, DJ Moore, Xavier Worthy. After the Rice injury, yeah. Or after the Rice injury, rather, yep. DJ Moore for Xavier Worthy. I mean, it seems like DJ Moore's the the right answer to that question. I think. I mean, if if you were in a test and there was two quest two answers, I mean, it seems like DJ Moore's the right answer to that question. Mm-hmm. Rashi Rice for Xavier Worthy. Don't do that. Xavier Worthy for Jalen Waddle. Oof. Uh, Worthy with Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Waddle with who knows who. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I I think the right answer to that is Jalen Waddle as well. But damn, that's a toughie. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to go one of two ways. In three weeks, you won't be able to sniff that trade. Or maybe you will because Waddle's not going to be doing anything. So that one might, might stick around. Or it, Worthy's going to be worth twice this because he's just going to be crushing. Right. Um, P- Pacheco for Worthy. Worthy. I think so, too. Uh, worthy for Keon Coleman and Amari Cooper. Worthy. I think so, too. Uh, Xavier Worthy, 26-2 for Brock Purdy, a third and a first. One quarterback, woof, not even close. Worthy, mm, yeah. So one there's some trades there, but I just wanted to see, you know, if just, that was a two, if that was a two quarterback, that's a, you know, well, obviously, this take the first out of it, but like worthy, I, I would give you worthy in a couple of draft picks for Brock Purdy in a two in a super flex, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I'm big on I'm, I'm big on Brock Purdy with the you know, he's he's staying with the Niners, yeah, so. I agree. All right, let's keep Purdy's, it a, Purdy's a super Purdy's a super flex build block at this point. For sure. Let's keep it moving. Let's let's hit at least one more thing before we get out of here. Let's go Sam Darnold because I think this is super interesting. And we've talked about it a week or two ago, but this is an underlying theme and it just keeps building, right? Yeah. Uh, we've hit the era of retreads really starting to pay dividends and and you know, imagine that coaching and situations maybe matter somewhat in, in a lot of cases. Uh, and now we've seen Sam Darnold, who I think both of us have accepted trades for Sam Darnold and a two in the off season. And we're stoked to get it. And uh, it's probably buyer's remorse at this point, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, in Superflex, I got offered a second round pick in the middle of the summer for Sam Darnold. And I took it as fast as I get it at this point, I would give it back to him in a hurry. You know, I would I would give you my give you that two you gave me, and I, how much more I got to give you to get that to get that Sam Darnold back and put him on my team. He's scoring points. He's in a, in, a, in an elite system with elite players around him. You saw we Addison didn't even come see right them all back. yet. We, we, we didn't Hawk see all the elite still, players around him. Hawk, Hawk's not even out there yet. 
Um, Addison just got back. Yeah, obviously I'm not calling Addison elite, but as a as a wide receiver mm. too, you know, as yeah, a wide receiver receiver as too, a wide receiver he's too. He's ridiculous. Not as good as he gets. Yeah, he's probably top five wide receiver two in the league. Yeah, good good for Sam Darnold. And that system and those players, like at this point, JJ McCarthy's gonna be watching next year. Right. Well, that was kind of my next question: is what? How do you think that that kind of plays out? Right. What do you? Well, it's all about that's that's postseason success. I mean, if this if Sam Darnold takes you to an NFC Championship game, he's a starter week one next year. You know, right? If he goes, if he goes to how the playoffs, him? and then whatever it takes. Work? Whatever it takes, if that's the case. Well, you're, you, the, I mean, you cool. probably you probably would have like one more, like a bot, like one more, like one more prove it year. You probably don't have to go from, you know, you're not paying him 50 million next year. If he well, takes that's what I'm saying with Davis these year. retreads. And I think what's good about them is you get the Baker t- style contracts. You get the uh, Geno style contracts. You get, you, you, you know, Sam, Sam Darnold, I think would be in line for one of those. You're not going to pay him $50 million, but you might pay him. You know, 35 over, you know, for two years, right? So oh, if you, you, or, you, or Paul, you, Paul's, you pause the clock right now. Sam Darnold will sign for he'll get he'll take sixty million guaranteed for two years right now, yeah, right now because he was almost out of the league or he, he was basically career, he was about to be a career backup, and and now he's about to make some money. So have you reversed course into a buying frame with Sam Darnold at all here? I could. There was a um I didn't realize he was for sale for that cheap. There was in one of our leagues he got uh, somebody bought Sam Darnold for two twos a couple days ago. And uh, I I texted him. I was like, that was a great purchase. Yeah. You know, you did. That's you didn't have to give up the one. Get you stacked up. You know, two twos. I would have two twos. I'd give you a three as well. You know, mm-hmm. um, to get a quarterback, to get a Sam Darnold and a super flex. He's just scoring points, and there's no reason to think he's not going to score points for a while. Right. Defense is humming. System's good. We're not, we're not even at full capacity with all the players here. Uh, let's explore some trades here real quick. You know, Sam Darnold here, two quarterback. Two twos and Russell Wilson. That seems light at this point, right? Oh, uh, see, Sam Darnold all day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one's this one's kind of silly. Tank Dell, a first and a second, or Sam Darnold. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. It, you know, did not. I'll know take Tank Dell in the one and the two. That's yeah. Easy for me. Here's an interesting one. Herbert and a third for Sam Darnold Sharps and a first. I'll take Sam Darnold Sharps and a first. I'm taking Herbert in the third. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the last trade you said was easy for you. It's the, like, that's the, that's the work we have to make. We're making trades on based on today and, you know, 10 weeks down the road. If, if Sam Darnold is leading the MVP chase, like he might be today, it's be hard to deny, but right now it's four weeks in and it's yeah. still kind of like it's found money, you know, right. it's still and, found and, money. And, like if you, if you got Sam Darnold on your team and you didn't, and you had him before week one, you paid hardly anything for him, you know, right. unless you just like, you know, unless you drafted him early in the draft super flex four years ago, then that's one thing, you know, but like most likely you didn't pay much for Sam Darnold and this is what, what you're going to do with him. And if you're a competing team and you really are using his points right now, it's hard to move him, though. It really, it really, I could, I could see how it would be extremely difficult to move him. I mean, here's a banger. Hurts for Darnold that doesn't, and a two-quarterback. That doesn't even make sense. No, but uh, here's one that's interesting. Sam Darnold and two twos. So you give Sam Darnold the you, – you add two twos with Sam Darnold, and you get a 2026 20, first. Obviously, the random trades, random, random draft picks, and a quarterback for, for a random 2026 20, first. So not even this year, but that could be Arch Manning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when I see twenty, when I see twenty twenty six first round pick, it means I just it, see that, Arch Manning. That, to me, that's a one out of twelve chance to get Arch Manning. Is what that is. That's a spin the wheel on Arch Manning. Yeah, and then you have down here Sam Darnold for Devin Singletary. So we're at such a wide range of things with Sam Darnold, which is kind of just why I wanted to talk about it. And I would, I'd buy Sam Darnold for that price tag all day. So like for me, it's a throw the line out there if I own Sam Darnold to see if I can get a home run cut on him, and I'm not just going to sell him for cheap anymore. Like two twos is is no longer an option for me to sell them. And if you're a good team, it's like you said, it's hard to move on from them. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of a buy, sell and hold Sam Donald's a buy, sell and hold all, all at once. It seems yeah, like and it, almost every time we talk trades that I always have to, I cannot help myself at all. It's every league is different. And it, if the price is this low, I'm buying If the price is this high, I'm selling. That's yeah, how well, you need kinda, to be playing this thing. Right. So I just wanted to talk about Sam Darnold and his values and, and kind of where we're at here. I think for the most part, I'm holding Sam Darnold. 
because uh, I think this is just, you know, the longer this proves out, the more value he gets, right? So if somebody wants to sell me him for for two twos and I got a good team and, and he can be my my third quarterback, I'll I'll do that all day long. Cause I'm I mean, what we're seeing right now is is really good. Now, if he like you said, you know, if he moves to Tennessee or he moves to the Raiders, are we are we as confident that old Sam doesn't pop back up? Not not really. Yeah, yeah. I think we've had enough building blocks at this point to see confidence kind of you know, rear its head back out with Sam Darnold. And I think that's the problem with a lot of these quarterbacks is they get, you know, unconfident and, and, and all the stuff around them. And that's, you know, that's why you have to pull guys like Bryce young out of the lineup. There's the confidence is shot. You gotta, yeah. gotta put them on the bench. Right. Uh, True. We can see how much better things can function. So, all right, well, we got Sam Darnold there. I want to run through a couple other guys real quick uh, that, that are on kind of the buy list for me. And Josh Jacobs is a huge, blinking one at the moment he hasn't really crushed it in any way shape or form just yet i feel like it's coming i love what we're seeing from jacobs and this would be that that's a buy for me Khalil shakir also a buy for me i'm gonna go ahead and throw out a two and see if i can reel shakir in and somebody say might say oh that's way too much i love what we're seeing from shakir and the way they're using him just seems like he's going to be really consistent i don't know that i have anybody there that's going to just come out and be this crazy target target monster but Shakir and, and the way they're spreading the ball around I love to see it and then Brian Robinson if you need a, a running back and you want to pay a little bit for him I feel like this is the guy to go get right now uh it doesn't seem like the market is over bearing on him like he might still be able to pry him from somebody w- what's your thoughts on Brian Robinson big co is there a price tag there f- for him I know I'm throwing this just off the cuff at you here no, I like it. I like buying Ryan Robinson. I I, uh, I just placed a bet on the Washington Commanders this week at plus three and a half at the Cardinals. And just that, that was one of the things going through my head when I was looking at it. They got a run game, right? Obviously, the running quarterback opens things up. And obviously, if you can throw it deep accurately to Terry McLaurin, that will back the defense up. So there's this a complimentary football that this, that this team is playing. They got a, a rookie quarterback who is making ridiculously good decisions. And uh, Brian Robinson is a part of the heartbeat of the offense and he keeps the chains moving. And because of everything that I just said with, you know, with the running game of the court, with the skill, at the legs of the quarterback and the uh, weapons on the outside that, that he can hit accurately. Brian Robinson is doing, you know, work and, yeah. and he, and he gets the goal line carries too. And, mm-hmm. you know, I just, and so I, I like the buy on Robinson. Yeah, here, here's a cut. Just Dynasty Daddy it up real quick. Two and a three, a, two, a 25, two and a 27, three for Brian Robinson. Easy. Still cheap. Here's a, I'll here's take, a, I'll take one a problem. Of Jacobs and Brian Robinson for Spears, Leggett, and a 26 first. I'm taking that running back side and going and, and running away. Like, I like Leggett, 26 first. That's basically a 25 second to me. And Tajay Spears, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Brian Robinson for a two straight up. These are all trades that happened yesterday. Um, yeah. You know, Pacheco at, for Brian Robinson in a fourth. Obviously, he's hurt right now, and Pacheco has been nothing but excellent for for them. But, I mean, man, that, that's a tough one for me. to Like, I, I feel okay with that. I feel like I'm getting a good ROI. I feel like I'm getting, you know, around the same where we're going to end up if Brian Robinson stays healthy, where where these guys were valued at least coming into this year where, where Pacheco was that like last kind of standing running back. I feel like Brian Robinson is going to end up kind of in that area in this yeah. next year's ADP kind of round. So yeah, I can see that uh, still, still some uh, Brian Robinson for a two here, still some availability for Brian Robinson. I guess that's kind of what I'm, what I'm driving at here. And I, I, I think he looks excellent. The the commanders in the run game looks excellent. Let me, let me get that. Uh, if yeah. I can't, I like um, it. And then one last thing before we get out of here. I saw a few people, Bijan being the biggest bust in fantasy. Bijan a sell for you right now? Any panic? No. no. None. Yeah. None. Uh before last week's game, before the yesterday's game, he was uh dominating touches as a running back, um, dominating opportunities for this for the team. The we touched on in the wide receivers talk when we kind of graced by Drake London. The first three weeks was a gauntlet for the team, for the Chiefs. I mean, for the uh, Falcons offense going against those three uh, defenses. And then you talk about a 36 year old quarterback on a new team with a new offensive line, a new center, new wide receivers, new play caller, new everything. You know, he's a new new to the team. He's supposed to be the savior. He's supposed to be the savior. He comes in, he limping, got a mm-hmm. cut on his ankle. You know, got a scar on his ankle. 
and and no live reps before the first game of the season, and and then you play those three teams, and then you go into week four and you play a slobber knocker against a division opponent who you know obviously they made fifty five fifty five long term record of the two teams playing each other. You know we are, so like the Saints have a good defense and they're going to try to beat you up in division. That's how they that's how they win their division games. And so coming into the game, he had a shoulder. So one person says he doesn't get the run in the third and the fourth quarter because they gave it to the hot hand, his backup. But you could also say, well, maybe he tweaked his shoulder. Yeah. You know, he did have a nasty, and maybe that's uh, not the case, but he did have a shoulder coming in. He had a nasty catch and run touchdown that was called out by called back by a holding penalty that did not help his case to run, you know, that, that had nothing to do with him breaking the touchdown. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the holding penalties that you should just let go. He's well right. past that holding. That holding does not have anything to do with the play anymore. Just don't even throw that flag. The runner's gone. So oh, was I, all- Bijan is completely not a sell for me. You're not getting any of my Bijan any cheaper than you were week one. Yeah, the target share is ridiculous. He's excellent in the passing game, and I think they'll figure this run game out. And and he's been even he's you know first two games were sixteen points, and then you know down these last two games a little bit. But man, we're we're so we're so close to Bijan being a twenty point a game to twenty five point a game guy. I feel like and and Algier is good. And how many backs in the league are not getting you know shadowed out by you know another running back right now? Pretty much you know Gibbs is a top running back. He's got Monty, who's excellent. Now we got Braylon Allen, Braylon Shadow, Allen, you know, Brees and Algiers good. And we got Bijan and like, you know, how many, how many of these guys aren't getting that, but the good ones are still able to produce with, with that guy there, uh, kind of being the thorn in the side, but also being good for the longevity of the season. And we see the special plays from Bijan, you know, just not turning into like these crazy monster games, but the Falcons offense isn't matured and spreading its wings into the, you know, Phoenix from the ashes that we quite thought it would be <laughs> at this point. And it makes it, there's some logical sense that you can point to. Uh, now, if you want to be worried about Kyle Pitts, you should be worried a little bit about Kyle Pitts. He's still like 20 years old, but uh, it, it's, you know, it's not a great look right now for Kyle Pitts, but don't be worried about B. John Robinson. Uh, I, I completely agree. Obviously, in this version of the Falcons offense, there's they, the stat came out this week. He's had zero like schemed up targets and his first read targets are like zero or whatever. Like, you know, so like obviously it's not looking good for Kyle Pitts this year in this offense. It would probably take an injury or two for something to change this year for Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is 22, 23 years old. Like I'm, he's already overproduced for what he should have done as far as historically for a tight end. Now, is it going the wrong direction right now and make you feel bad? Yes, Absolutely. Buy low on Kyle Pitts and put him on your bench. I'm not Ooh. telling you to put him in your lineup. I'm not telling you to put him in your lineup. But the and and I mean maybe don't buy this week because it's going to continue to get worse. Like I mean it's going to feel worse. Now there's going to be worse. Well, that's what. Yeah, he just had zero. So maybe this week is the week because I mean he did have a, <laughs> you know, so like he had a big he had a big catch last week. So this past week he got zero. So I mean I I don't think it's going to get a whole lot better in the short term because they're just not looking for him. It, they're taking some uh, they got other easy buttons apparently but we've seen him do plenty on NFL field right this second he is not in the offensive coordinator's plans unfortunately but as a 23 year old ridiculous unicorn type player I'd be more than happy to pick him up on the cheap and put him on my on my bench and maybe we we'll had to right. workshop what we had to workshop what the cheap is because we don't have time to get into what the yeah. cheap is right this second but we could workshop that Big Co giving you one more move to make that you're probably not going to like. But anyway, let's wrap it up there. We appreciate you. $5 holler if you want an extra episode every week. We, we go in live on Sundays, 9 p.m. You can join uh, or just listen on Mondays. If you're not subscribed, please do. If you haven't hit the five-star review, help your boys out. It's the easiest thing you could do. Give us a five-star review. You know what we're about to do? We're about to bring five-star reviews and submissions for, for free tees back. Because we need to, we need to move the needle on some five star reviews. We got a bunch of them. We're doing good, but we should have way more. We see the numbers and it all match up. Help your boys out. Do that if you don't want to give out the five dollar holler and join the community, which is awesome and growing. Um, and and you should you should be there too. But I get it. You know, paywall. Won't you, won't you, whatever. Once you pop pop up just a little bit, let us see that awesome shirt you got. Ooh, there we go. Boom. Hmm. And that is I lo- honestly the most comfortable shirt I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to be working on a, a better way to, to sell those things for your pleasure as well. So 
Until next time, keep it locked and loaded right here. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Later.